That is awesome. <laughs> I am Sulkanum. This presentation is called The Art of Honor. And what I mean by the word art, art is the qualitative expression of being. An honor, it's an honor to be present to one's truth, one's feelings, one's significant, significance, and one's volition. Out of honor, things wonderful can come, like heroes. A hero sees something, takes a stand or an action that saves someone's life. I speak all over the place. I do things and perform. I entertain all over the place. But to, today, I'm nervous, just a little bit nervous because in the audience is one of my heroes. Whenever I introduce her to somebody, I say, this is my hero. This is Kathy Dorr, my fourth grade teacher, my hero. She's sitting right there. And I mean hero in every sense of the word because you saved my life. Every sense of the word except hero sandwich. She's not a hero sandwich. But in every other way, you saved my way of being. You saw me before I knew who I was. And you, and you recognized it. I remember the day Kathy Dorr, my fourth grade teacher, my hero, invited Roger Alexander to our classroom. And he's still a pivotal member of the music scene in, in Bellingham. He played the violin for us at Silver Beach Elementary School. When he was done, he said, who here wants to learn how to play the violin? And on that day, I said, me, 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 I want to play the violin, please, can I play the violin? I want to play the violin so bad, please just let me play the violin. I want to play the violin. <laughs> I remember he said, does anyone else want to play the violin? All the kids in the playground, they were giving me a hard time. They were saying things like, who ever heard of a Lummi Indian violin player? Indians don't play the violin. They play the wood flute or the hand drums or something like that. They don't play the violin. That's just stupid. But you see, I had a memory of an old man sitting on a three-legged stool, like the kind used for milk and cows. And I remember before I was a foster kid, I remember crawling down to him on the reservation I, and I was wearing my dad's long white t-shirt. I looked like Sweet Pea on Popeye. And I crawled down to him and I put my hand on his knee and I looked over his belly of wisdom. I call it that because I'm working on one myself. And I remember the sound of his violin coming down in the midst of all the chaos on the reservation. I had purpose, vision, clarity, understanding coming into my heart, my soul. So when the kids on the playground said whoever heard of a native american violinist i told them hey it's got a bow <laughs> stupid <laughs> took the blank parent permission slip to my foster parents and i said could you please sign this so i can play the violin and you know what they said they said no and I was like, why? And I said, well, if you haven't noticed, we have an 18-year-old kid of our own. She's been playing ever since fourth grade. And she's just starting to sound good on that thing. <laughs> so you can play anything. You can play the wood flute or the drums or something like that. You can play anything but the violin. I was devastated. It was my chance to be me in my own, in my own truth. That was my possibility. Took the blank parent permission slip back to my fourth grade teacher, and she denies this still to this day, but when she saw that it wasn't signed, she said, well, it's my first year of teaching. What are they going to do? Fire me? She signed the parent permission slip. <laughs> and because of that stance, because she saw my truth, because she saw my feelings, she was present to my feelings, because she was present to my significance and, and to my volition, she saved me. Now, if only the whole world was that way. But no, 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 no. I had middle school happen when I asked my principal, why, why do we have the warrior 
and an Indian chief with feathers in his head as our mascot. Why? And he said to me, you should be honored that our middle school mascot is a warrior. And I realized should and honor don't always fit in the same sentence. I became curious about what honor is. Is it something I earn? Is it something like the Medal of Honor or my position on the honor roll? Is that what honor is? It can, I can only, I have to earn it like respect? And I realize now, as I've played the violin for over three million people, live, in front of people, and many of them, their lives have been changed because of the honor of one person seeing my possibility. See, out of that I learned that I could be present to my own truth. I could be present and muster up the courage to feel my own feelings. To recognize that I am significant just for being here on earth. And by my own volition, practice. Build the skills that it takes to be who I am. Maybe my identity isn't the violin. Maybe this is more than just a joke as a bow. Maybe it's the desire that makes me who I am. Because that is, that's the pivot point of the word volition. Volition is that point, that very special point between will and willing ignition of that possibility. If I muster up the courage to be present to my truth, my feelings, my significance, and my volition, out of that comes a desire to be present to other people's truths, other people's feelings, other people's significance, and other people's volition. And then it occurred to me, what if? What if everyone, what if everyone cared? What if everyone, rather than dismissing someone's truth, you're wrong, but instead saying, maybe I can see that that is how you believe is the truth. That is the truth. You see, you all are heroes. You're in this room. Because the only way you could be here is that, one, you were thinking about going to college. And many of you are first-generation college students. You had to measure yourself against the, the past and realize that that's not who you truly are. That in you is a desire, a possibility of something greater. And you see, every speaker here today knows that every speaker today undoubtedly has said it's an honor to be able to be here and on the stage in front of these people it is an honor and you're heroes if you can ignite the potential for honor among all people just by honoring who you are then you are a hero. I wrote a piece that was inspired by, in 1983, Native elders met at the University of Lethbridge to address substance abuse on reservations throughout North America. At the end of this conference, they looked at all the causes and effects of drug abuse and substance abuse, and they, they concluded that the hurt of one is the hurt of all. But they also said the honor of one is the honor of all. And at the time, when I first heard that phrase, I wasn't playing the violin. I wasn't being true to my own self. I wasn't being true to my feelings or significance or my volition. I was living very dishonorably. Rather than feeling my own feelings, I tried to make everyone around me feel their feelings for me. If I was sad, I'd make everybody sad around me. Okay, now you know how I feel. And I'd walk away. honor when you experience it and you know what it is 
you'll never forget it. You'll know how to tap into it at any time and redesign your life in a way that you want it to be. This is a piece about that possibility. It's called The Honor of All. Thank you very much. So the bottom line is, is that no matter what you do, you don't have to give up who you are while you do what you do. In my case, I was so lucky to find out who I was through a violin. But part of it, part of what I want to say is that Find your violin. The educational process is about knowing who you are, and once you know who you are, 
be who you are while you do whatever you do. And then the Lummi language, now it's him. It's Chalaka Siem, Haishka. Aksala Siem, Haishka. Thank you all of you for being here today because of all the places you could be, you chose to be a part of this. For that, my heart is full of gratitude. So, for the rest of your life, do your best. May it be blessed. And let the great spirit of love take care of the rest.